If this was the finish line right here, your right heel would win the race. All right, Mike, so let's talk about this trail leg specifically and the movement that we see with the professional golfer as, it, as the club approaches down towards the golf ball and then post impact relative to what we generally see with the amateur, right? So we often see that this right leg for the right hander for the amateur would tend to fire out towards the golf ball pretty quickly, right? Right. And the effect of that as the golf club then moves towards the ball, we could see that it's thrown out as such, right? The professional golfer do something quite different. In that sort of transition move, the trail leg would almost stay quiet for a period of time as the arms begin to unload underneath the chest. And then with a well-sequenced golf swing, they would tend to move into this position here where we wouldn't really see a gap between the legs. Right. As opposed to this old one, disco look through the ball. Exactly. Where the hits go back, right? Yeah. So. You see a lot of players uh, with this sort of fault that you work with, right? And you've got a great drill using a water bottle, which is going to reduce the effect just based on the simple sort of outcome uh, focus of avoiding that water bottle through the golf ball. And I want you to talk a little bit more about the benefits of doing so. Yeah, I mean, it's the hardest thing in, in golf is getting feedback, right? And so that's one of the elements that we need when we go and practice. You know, if we just go to the range and we're hitting balls down, the ball's not telling us the whole story, right? Yeah, correct. It's certainly telling us the story of what did we do at impact with the club, but there's other things that we're not getting the feedback on. And so, you know, if we can use something as simple as a water bottle or some other training aid, then regardless of the outcome of the shot, mm. we can decide or understand, okay, yes, we did what we were trying to do, or no, we didn't because you know, we failed at, at whatever it was. So Yeah, the, um, the, I suppose with the, the majority of recreational golfers, and you hear this all the time when they come into the lesson, is like, I feel like I'm doing this, I feel like I'm doing this, then you put them on cam and Absolutely. you show them, they go, oh, I'm not doing that, you must have recorded a different swing. <laughs> no, 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 buddy, we've got it. <laughs> yeah, it's 100%, you know, we get it all the time, and you know, that's, that's one of the challenges as well, right? Feel versus real, mm -hmm. and so, so, you know when we can add that feedback we can get a little bit closer to connecting the dots between what we're doing and you know what it feels like yeah super important right and so the first port of call for anyone practicing their golf game would be to use some visual feedback first of all so for example if you are a player and you record your golf swing and as the golf club is approaching the ball you can see that this right leg is firing out towards the ball this back foot spinning as such yes well, now you're aware of a fault within your golf swing. Exactly. And then using some feedback, such as we're gonna use this water bottle here to give us some, uh, some feel and some kinesthetic feedback of exactly what will happen when we remove that fault out of our golf swing through a series of drills or exercises. Yeah, and I think, you know, to your point there, I think one of the things that allows us to do is, you know, we can figure out how to not knock the water bottle down. You know, that's the idea is to leave the bottle standing. Mm. And then we can figure, we start to get a sense within our body and what we feel like we need to do to successfully complete the task, mm. right? As opposed to just throwing out some swing th thoughts, some ideas, yeah. you know, with, a, with some good feedback, we can go, okay, when I do this, this is what I feel. In, in this case, it could be like you were saying before, the right knee kind of coming more across to the left knee. There's a lot of different cues to solve the same problem. This is just gonna help us get there faster. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up to this golf ball and I want you to place that water bottle yeah. uh, where it should be positioned for the amateurs that are struggling with this. So like I'm basically putting it here, it's right against your foot and now I'm gonna slide it back Mm -hmm. So that it's you know in position where that right foot, if it spins out, you're going to kick it, knock it down. Yeah. So we would go like that. Exactly. Now, yep. From this, right? The reason that this is spinning out, if I get to the top of the swing, let's say I make a relatively functional backswing, what happens for the players who their heel would come and hit that water bottle? So one of the things you kind of alluded to earlier was that that right hip, you know, the pelvis kind of firing towards the target. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so when that happens, obviously this knee's got nowhere to go except inwards as well. Correct. And so as a result of that, your hands now have to try and find a way to the golf ball. And generally that's going to be out to mm -hmm. get around this. Yeah. And unless we save it at the bottom, the heel's going to strike the ball. Yeah. 
we're going to shank it or like you said we're going to find a way to try and make contact mm. not going to be the best way most likely yeah yeah absolutely i think the majority of golfers would tend to get themselves into this position because there's this huge obsession out there of rotating right from the top of the golf swing we want to try and rotate to get shallow now it's very important that you understand that from the top of the swing we need to be in a position for that to even occur and for a lot of players, if they get set up correctly and they build a functional backswing position, there's a good chance they're not going to have to try and rotate in the golf swing. It's just going to happen naturally as a result. Now, for the player that, regardless of this backswing position, would start firing that upper body to right. try and get that club back to the ball, we can see straight away the lead arm pins to the, the shoulders and the chest there and that right foot at an effect is going to slide out and we're going to get some Jose Maria's just coming straight <laughs> into you right there. Yeah, it's coming right at me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that water bottle is placed pretty much in line with the ankle as such. Now, when you're working with players on this, would you remove the ball first and just get them to do some slow swings? Sure, it's always a good thing, yeah. To get some, some nice dry swings here and let's see. What sort of speed would we be looking at here? You can start off generally kind of close to full speed here. 80% mm -hmm. would be fine. Okay, so coming through there now, in my normal golf swing, I wouldn't hit that, right? right exactly. But the fact that we've placed that there, it brings awareness to me. And then even then, I was kind of thinking about, God, I hope it yeah. has to make myself look like a fool. So right. from the top, slow, and then through there. And it really encourages uh, a banking of the foot. A banking of the foot would be detailed as, as we're shifting our hips forward in space, as opposed to having them hang back. I can feel that this right foot is almost rolling exactly. in slightly. Exactly, yes, right? spot on. And you'll see some great images of players like Tiger Woods through the golf ball. It's almost like just the back outside of that shoe is lifting up, impact, and then the follow through. So it's essentially just creating a better sequence between the upper and the lower. Exactly, like if I can steal your club for one second, you know, I used to work for Jim McLean and one of the things that he talked about was like, if this was the finish line right here, your right heel would win the race, right? Yeah, that's a great so, so trying to get that heel to win the race as opposed to here and back here, obviously it's, you know, it's lagging behind. Yeah, yeah, and there's a plethora of drills out there in including, let's say that one there, but then also you can work on sliding that back foot behind you. This is an old bowling drill essentially the same as if you were at a temp and bowling alley, you would do that feeling there. And what that allows you to do is simply ensure that you're not getting into a space where you're rotating your upper body too early. Right. And it allows the golf club to come underneath yourself. And I think to, you know, to your point right there, one of the things that we see the tour players doing is getting that shift, yeah. you know, getting the pressure over early as opposed to back and laying it back. Yeah. Right. And fundamental number one when it comes to improving your golf game is creating more of a consistent low point or the very bottom of the swing arc. For sure. And the further back in space our hips are, it is almost impossible unless I'm throwing the golf club out in that direction to get that low point forward. Yeah, I mean that's, you know, we're gonna to have to make compensations and that's where a consistency just goes straight down. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna blend this into a little bit of a drill sequence. We're removing the ball first. I'm gonna start off with some smaller, slower swings, just getting the sensation that my foot is never moving out away towards that golf ball. And I'm actually feeling and recreating that sensation that you were just talking about the McLean drill about feeling that the heel is winning the race towards the target. And that really achieves a fantastic outcome in regards to solving this problem of that trail foot spinning out. And I can feel automatically my hips are shifting forward, which is great. Exactly. So let's chuck a ball in there and I'll go at about half speed here. Yeah, beautiful. And yeah. I can see that in that little half speed here, as my body was moving towards the target, that right foot was kind of banking up and real solid contact. I felt my arms unload underneath my body. It was a perfect shot. Yeah, it was really good. Awesome. Thanks, awesome, mate. mate.